everybody just a short introduction to the first episode of the uh, witches series the English witches series we'll be using this book the workplace and spells by Marla Brooks we used the cards last year Wendy and me and the healthy witch by TJ Perkins so if you would like to get those books and um, there will be in, uh, details below the video and I hope you will enjoy discussion on the books and um, what is going to happen in the coming workshop it is not only about witches stuff it's also about getting your body in shape men uh, mentally physically and uh, internally and externally and there will be people coming uh, 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 into the series as well like candle makers or uh, a reflexologist hopefully and uh, other people that will give their view on what they do to help you enhance your sacred space like your meditation space will also be doing meditations will it's it will cover everything also what is going ar on around in the media like the environment and how people behave so I hope you will enjoy the series and the first episode we've done uh, a three episodes already so I hope you will understand that once this video is finished the second part will go carry on and then the third part and I hope you will enjoy Please like and share and welcome uh, Georgina into our fold. And I would like to thank Marla Brooks, um, TJ Perkins for their work and information and also Shifa Red Feather where we got the books from. And also Wendy and that will be coming in to discuss this and do it in a Dutch version. So take care, God bless and stay safe and I hope you enjoy. Ciao, ciao. It's taping now. Hi Georgie, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. How are you Charlotte? I'm okay, thanks darling. Thank you very much for working with me um, with the uh, Healthy Witch and the Workplace and Spells by, uh, this one is the Healthy which by um, T.J. Perkins, and that's the workbook. And then we have the workplace and spells by Marla Brooks. And we, uh, I did a series uh, la uh, this year, earlier this year, with Wendy, and she'll be doing the Dutch one, uh, uh, Georgina. And everybody, I would like to hand over the uh, club to or the, the spoon or whatever you want to call it uh, to Georgina and thank you very much for working with me. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself please. Oh what would you like to know? Uh, well I know you've got a shop because I saw you on a cyber fair uh, on life and soul and you've got some amazing stuff so i hope you will show some of your stuff during the series um that is related to the witchery but uh from now on i would like to call it wiccan um, because then the uh, non uh, witches uh, can relate more to uh, the wiccan way of life which to me means people that work with the earth and their environment and that is lovely, taking something, but also giving something back to the earth, being more conscious of plastic bags, just as simple as that. Um, also, uh, green fingers, I have green fingers and I like to uh, do gardening, but unfortunately I can't do that anymore because of my whiplash. Uh, I'm a mum of two uh, grown up daughters and uh, I am a, a spiritual coach a life coach and I have a YouTube uh, channel where the series is going to be published. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, well, as you may already know, 
I we know about my shop. Um, that's mainly online. I used to do in person fairs as well, um, but obviously with everything going on at the moment, they've been put to one side. Um, I'm also trained in Reiki and angel therapy. Ah, oh, I'm Reiki master as well. Sorry, I forgot about that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, so but that's still quite new to me. It's only been the last few years that I've been doing those. And I think the angel therapy was last year, it's April last year. Is that the angel therapy by Diana Virtue? Um, it was taught to me by someone else, but I believe it's along the same sort of lines as what Diana Virtue did. Okay. Um, so, yeah, nice so I've only been working with angels for the last year or so. OK, and do you use your angel therapy in your Wiccan work? Um, not massively, um, because to me, they're one is more a manifestation tool, um, whereas with the angel therapy, that's a healing. OK, um, so I to I use at slightly different times. I thought Wiccans worked, uh, which is worked with uh, herbs and brews and um, also to f in with regards to health and healing. Well, that's what I, uh, um, Marla talks about the angels and we'll get to that and deities. Uh, what's the what is the difference between deities or angels if my English is correct deities is the people that you um, uh, call upon to help you so that's why the question do you also work with the do you use the angels in the Wiccan work yes yeah. no I, I do to a certain extent um, it depends what practice I'm doing because okay. it's so individual to, to each person practicing Wicca, we all do it slightly differently. So there's no one right or wrong way of doing it. No, that's what um, Marla says as well. And TJ Perkins. Um, but I thought this book is brilliant because um, this is going to take us on a journey to get healthier. And I'm going to try to stop smoking. <laughs> So, and, uh, because you are what you eat, and I do believe it, if you eat rubbish food, you, it's more, more, more or less is going to make you blow, bloat out and get sick because it's, there's not so much uh, vitamins or minerals or proteins in bad food as uh, in good food. And I like to know where my food comes from. And also because I believe that I'm a healer. That's what pulled me towards uh, the Wiccan way of life as well. I have been called witch, but I'm not a practicing Wiccan. I just love stones, the gemstones. And we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about astrology and tarot uh, because that's also in this book. So let's start with number one chapter number one there's five chapters in this book for those people that have not got the book there will be a workshop uh, later on once we've done the series in english there will be a workshop in english because it's a lot of work to be putting into it um, to digest uh, yeah. the, the book sorry but i've already done 12 pages um, to work this out on how i'm going to say it to give me a guideline because if we do it from the book uh, because this is like a review um, it's just introducing the book and you and me working together and finding out more from you uh, the way of a pagan or a Wiccan life and hopefully Wendy will do the same with me in Dutch and then uh, I hope you're going to meet each other as well through cyber yeah that would be really good yeah it's nice to bring people together okay well the first chapter is mind body health and the path so it i think she said oh my goodness um is this an other diet book no it isn't and um she, um, she wrote this book uh 
The author J.T. Perkins wrote the book as she experienced the whole journey herself. She is no doctor or a professional. I would like to add that um, explicitly to people. This is just guidelines, somebody else's experience that they've put down in a beautiful book. And you can work from this book as there are also um, plan of action like this. Um, but I would suggest buy a jotter so that you can write down and keep the book nice and fresh so you can redo all the um, exercises again and again and again. Um, it's like, uh, I suppose, like an, uh, a witch's book, um, like a diary. I don't know what you call the book, the, um, the Book of Shadows. Is that what it's called? You see, I've already picked something up. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> OK. She uh, she's no professional, no doctor. Um, but she says, uh, be aware of what you eat. I did it through trial and error. This is also what she states. Chapter one, the path you have chosen. This path, mind, body and health. Why do we, why, this is the question that I would ask, for example, in the workshop, um, in the conversation, after everybody has read the chapter, to make it come alive. Why have you come to the workshop to do this? Yeah, it's always really good to know what your goal is and what yeah. you're hoping to get from something. Yeah. I think so too and I also think coming together with other people and hearing their version of what they are interpreting the book uh, and their experiences with hands on because that's what we're going to do because you have to start walking the path and making the path come alive. Um, I think it supports, it, uh, it supports us to be together and motivates us much easier to stay on the path. What would you like, um, then also the question, what would you want from this path? What result do you wish to reach or goal? As there are lots of different choices and paths. Why this way? Because of the book? Because there is a guide? because there is a group or something else. I think that makes it quite clear. Yeah. Um, then we go, then I would, that's sort of like the introduction that would be in the workshop. You will see that this book covers a lot of different subjects and I will be discussing this with Georgina and Wendy. Just to name a few. Goddess. Correct me if I'm wrong, Georgina. Goddess, that is Mother Earth. Is it not Georgia? Georgie? Yes, there are many um, goddesses in the Wiccan path. Um, the Earth is our, is our mother. It's where we come from, where we return to. And so the goddesses that we work with um, whether it be during spell work or like a, a prayer type meditation, it can depend on, we may have a particular goddess that we prefer working with, or it can be to do with what we're trying to achieve as to which goddess we ask to come in. And to what, how many goddesses are there? Lots, lots and lots and lots. I don't know all the names of them. Um, because they can be from different traditions. They don't have to necessarily be uh, pagan or Wiccan. There are also Norse goddesses that can be brought in, Egyptian goddesses and oh, Greek goddesses. I like goddesses. that deck from Diana Virtue. The yeah, you, you yeah. can bring all of those in to use because they all have different attributes and things that they can bring to that particular moment when you need them. Same as what the angels do. Good. Well, uh, I gave my deck to uh, Wendy um, because it was Dutch and I rather stick to English. <laughs> okay. But she was happy with it. 
Yeah. Um, as the tarot, she, um, the, the goddess, that's clear now to me. Um, um, as in tarot, she, uh, Mother Earth, is also the Empress and the Queen of Pentacles. She, they, these ladies nurture their siblings and the seeds that they sow because they're also known as the ladies with the green fingers. Um, and um, um, I've, I've lost it now, sorry. That's uh, all right, don't worry. Uh, I wish there was a pause button. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so she nurtures her seeds and seedlings so well as uh, within as externally. So that I think that mean I, what I meant there it was that um, she nurtures her children inside the house and she protects them outside the house. The same with the seedlings that she grows. Some plants grow outside and other plants grow inside and they need all different types of attention and also um, going on to meditation um, that is what um, TJ also talked about how can you meditate contemplate with pain that's what she also refers to uh, in the first chapter um, she says well you can't meditate with pain I disagree a little bit there because um, meditation for me or contemplation is putting all the ducks in a row. And uh, I have pain in my back, so when I meditate, I sit in a comfortable chair that opens up to nearly a bed. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, or I go and lie on my bed um, to ease the pain and to level off because once I do the meditation I start at the top of my crown and we'll be doing this in the um, workshop as well learning how what the difference is between meditation and contemplation um, and I also uh, bring in the angel angels Sometimes I do the Reiki meditation um, because that's also different to the angelic meditation that I do uh, because of Archangel Metatron. He represents the white light that cleans the chakras and then it, each chakra has a different angel as well. So uh, because I, I, when I work with them and I ask them to join me, uh, there is a, a, a peace comes over you and you just feel relaxed now also in uh, she she goes on to say you have to try to find different things what is good for you what helps you but a lot of therapies they only last a short while and medication as well and i do believe that definitely yeah um and that's where I would like to discuss here a little bit more about the therapies. She um, she went to, uh, um, let's say, aromatherapy and that didn't work only for a few weeks. That's oil with uh, the essence of a plant in it. So does the witch use oil with plants in it or essence of plants? Yeah, we use essential oils as well. Um, they, I mostly use um, candle magic. So most of my stuff is all focused around candles. So you'd use the oils to anoint the candles before yeah. you light them. Um, and if there are any symbols or anything that you were going to carve into it, then you'd do that first and then anoint the candle afterwards. And then depending on what your intended outcome is of the spell, would dictate which oil you use. Okay, and uh, do, you, do you have recipes for that? I normally just make it up as I go along. Yeah, or use something like this. <laughs> you know what, I was just going through this. I absolutely love these because I'm all about simplicity. 
I don't like the, the overly involved, drawn out, long processes. So these are great because they're so short and simple and easy to do. And so. they're also very modern, I find, because um, it's like if you are in a traffic jam, well, yeah. in the 1400s, 1500s, they didn't have traffic jams, I'm right. sure. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, um, and there's one for defragging your hard drive as well. Sorry? There's one for defragging your hard drive as well, which I'd never have thought of. Yeah, uh, the computer, he's got the computer in here as well. And also, that, that's that one, I think. Yeah. And what I also like is they've got an old telephone, but then they've got the modern version, the computer here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the uh, the spells, what I also like about the spells is they will help you bring, focus on what is wrong because you can choose a spell for confidence and an ordinary person, not a Wiccan, they can uh, use the little mirror and the candle and the, the white candle, the golden candle and high John incense. Um, I don't know what that is in Dutch, but I'm sh certain I can find out on Google. Um, then it, it gives you a description on what we, on how to do it. And that's mm -hmm. why I like it. And even without the candle, you can say the little affirmation or incantation with finishing it off, which is nice. So mote it be. That just gives it the oomph. Yeah. And that's why I love this book, because this book hasn't got so many spells. It's really basically working with the book. Going back to the healthy, uh, so that will bring in the balance between these two books and make it real. So uh, non-Wiccans can use these two books as well. If I find it difficult to think of affirmations whilst meditating instead of using the shot uh, um, oh gosh how do you say that again you get a particular word when you're initiated for when you meditate i've done transcendental meditation uh, i'm just going to stop i only know them as um, affirmations i remember now it's called mantra. Thank you, um, Georgie. Uh, instead of using your mantra, I use the affirmations because then you are actually fixing what you want. You are asking for it. You're asking the universe, the, di uh, the divine and me, the angels or the goddesses in your case. Um, this is what I want. And you're actually saying it the right way. That's how I look at spells in this book. OK, so going into the book again, the working book, page 10. Uh, I'll just read a little bit uh, from the book. Most of us have tried uh, chiropody uh, and acupuncture. Yes, these techniques can help, but only to a certain point. You'll, you'll plateau and find yourself going every week for the same treatment with no further pain, relief or results. Weeks turn to months and which turns into years until you, you finally realize you are just spinning your wheels. I encourage you to continue to exercise. Do Tai Chi or yoga. I love doing Tai Chi, I did it. Run I'm on a yoga. treadmill, push through the pain and especially go to massage therapy. Keep in mind that it won't completely fix the problem, but those uh, physical activities are a partner to healing, just like your Ben Gay. I don't know what that means, Ben Gay. It's some kind of medication, I think. Uh, okay, and um, Syroderm, that is a cream against pain, and other creams, gels or pills. As a witch, I fully believe in the goddesses and that everything happens for a reason. At first, I couldn't 
fathom why I was going through so much pain for so many years. And then I found an all new chiropractical treatment, the activator method. And that is where we'll go into more in the workshops as well. Unlike the typical twisting cracking of usual chiropractic treatments, the activator is a spring load metal device. I would love to find out what that is. Yeah, I've never heard of this until now. Um, it sounds more like touch for health. You hold on to these two metal bars and it's connected to a computer with graphics and then uh, they will give you your biorhythm or something in your body. Okay. Sounds a little bit like this. Um, uh, a metal device that is gentle and non-evasive, used to the pinpoint a single vertebrae and a very small area of your back, neck, etc. At a, once at, you've got to do this, I suppose, one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Not the whole section of the back, but of the instrument's speed. The muscles are treated, are less likely to tense up. This means a patient could be more receptive to treatment. It sounds like there's also like a sense. I don't know whether you know the sense uh, therapy. That's like a little box. And you put uh, pads on on you and one on this side and one on that side and then you is um, electric frequency and you turn it up higher and higher and higher and sometimes okay. that's for some people it helps but not for me no i've not heard of that or tried it i've um i've been for physiotherapy um because i had a slip disc in the bottom of my back a few years ago and I remember them manipulating parts of my spine to kind of realign it to where it should be and I was so stiff and sore afterwards every time because of how they had to manipulate my spine. Well I've been to an acupuncture, I've been to um, a shiatsu, shiatsu practitioner and they sort of press very yeah. gently because I can't nobody can touch my back I can't have a massage because of the, my back because of I've been lanced and that's yeah. what whiplash does um, and um, a disen uh, disengages your back it's like an elastic that's been stretched out too far it jumps back and then the vertebrae start rubbing against it oh, and that's okay. painful so anyway I've had some of the treatments that she talks about so this really does resonate with me um, because none of them helped okay except um, um, the microwave uh, radioactive uh, pa uh, pain treatment they literally stick a needle that big in between your vertebrae then put the microwave on the heat so the nerve gets burned and is uh, activated or motivated to grow in a different way so the pain is diverted um i'm in pain 27 uh, 24 hours seven days a week but you learn to live with it because it does lessen a little bit and in the time that you learn to live with it um, you can cope better with life or with your health that's why i'm also really into this book see what i can get out of it yeah hopefully it'll be really helpful for you yeah i hope for everybody that does it reads it i began to understand how much uh, well i'm just uh, skipping a few uh, paragraphs but also um that's why I stepped into this book. Um, because that's what fascinated me because I, I have also used aromatherapy treatment uh, oils 
and some of them do help and I've used Bach remedy uh, that is very good very good but again not sufficient enough to take away the pain um, she I think um, TJ Perkins is also with the program and she doesn't uh, promise anything um, because she's so open about it and direct um, that she's only trying to make people aware of what um, one can do and you have to take action that's also what she's showing you have to take action do you want to get results so now I'm going to um, have a look, sorry. Uh, I've got to check out a, hang on a minute, of course. Well, that's the activator, and then she goes on to the experiences, and I've put down here true, 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 and cre creams, no, they don't work. Her advice, she found her advice through living through the pain and actually doing this journey herself. Can't have been easy. No, she's talking about years here because weeks turned into months into years. So that's why in the front of the book um, where it's uh, when the author's note, I'll just read the author's note. I should have done that before. TJ Perkins is not a licensed physician, nor is she a nutrition expert. She has been practicing Wicca for 13 years and has achieved the status of second degree and journey woman. All findings are from trial and error, years of being in pain and finding the answers in a holistic way. She has sought out many professionals and went through years of experimenting, trying new techniques and trusting the goddesses. Finally, with pain diminishing, and digestive symptoms improving, the truth has been revealed to TJ, now shares all that she's learned with you. Still, don't take everything for granted in field guide. Do your own research and ask questions and experiment. So that's that journey I have been as well. Uh, I've done it as well. Um, but I still have not found too many positive, long-lasting results. And then we, we that's the activator. And then I've got questions that I would ask in the workshop. Now I'm not a fully fledged witch, uh, but I do believe what you eat is what you are. Well, that's my quote, Georgina. You are a witch or Wiccan. What is your view on this? I agree with you. Um, when it comes to what we put into our bodies, we, we should be treating them like temples because we only have the one body for this lifetime. And everything that we put into our bodies has a vibration of its own. It's my own personal belief, um, which then, because we're taking it in, digesting it, and it becomes a part of us, we're taking that particular vibration of energy in to our bodies. So we should be mindful of what we're eating. Are you a vegetarian? I'm not quite. I'm heading in that direction, but I'm not quite vegetarian as yet. Because yeah. I live with I, meat. I'm eaters. heading more or less into that direction as well. But I wouldn't, I know there's three types of vegetarians. One is you can eat fish and chicken. Another one is that you don't eat any dairy products. And the third one, I believe, is you can't eat any of those such things. And you can't wear leather. Yeah. So yeah. you can take- avoid all byproducts of animals completely. Okay. Well, yeah. I like to keep it to the natural stuff. Um, I also see Wiccan way of life a little bit as an old fashioned way of life yeah. uh, and that people were more considerate, more thoughtful for their environment and for others and they helped each other 
much more and much easier, much quicker um, than now. Yesterday, even on the TV, on the news, um, uh, the 30 year old uh, generation was said 25 to 40 year olds um, don't bother to go and introduce themselves to their neighbors if they come and live in a new house. Um, that doesn't your, surprise me. <laughs> uh, people are getting more disconnected because of this digital age. Yeah. But the good thing is that I can, you're in England and I'm here in Holland and we can connect. And that, it, that is magic. My mother used to say the word too is not good, too little or too much. And that's the old way of life and the Wiccan way of life in my um, an, a, analysation. Yeah, it, it's very much about being in balance and treating not only the planet and animals around us with respect, but also yeah. each other. Yeah, true. It's solidarity. All about harmony. Solidarity. Yeah. And then also living in harmony with the different seasons as well. Uh, yeah. Is this part of life as a witch? Uh, sorry, I'm just reading my notes here. Okay. Um, is being a vegan uh, a part of uh, a witch's life? No, not necessarily. It, each one is different, so. And do you cook a lot with herbs or do you just use them in when you're doing spells or offerings? A bit of both. I quite like using seasoning, so it's more for the taste than any magical purpose normally when I'm cooking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I do like using them in both. Do you know, I'm getting hungry now. Yorkshire pud. I love Yorkshire <laughs> pud. I don't know, they just came in. <laughs> Okay, uh, I like garlic as well. Yeah. That gives a spaghetti bolognese. Boom, oomph. Oh, darn, you're going to make me hungry now as well, <laughs> thinking about spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> um, now, uh, Georgina. Uh, Uh, do you also use things from all other cultures uh, in uh, like um, when you, um, I've got to stop this again, hold on. <laughs> 